one thing we have to be clear about when we say that something is a rule, that it's not a 100% scenario that the rule is always applicable. So for example, here, although in four of the 10 cases, we've got whenever red occurs, white also occurs. So that's, that's a rule. However, there's the scenario here where you've got red, but white doesn't occur. Okay, so a rule could have cases in which it is successful and also cases in which it is not successful. We are not looking for an ironclad guarantee, but all we are trying to do is to mine the data and find some positive features that we can exploit. We are not looking for certainty here. So it's your turn now. Take a look at the same data set that we have. Identify some other rule other than red implies white. Any other rule that you can think of, any single rule. It doesn't have to be a good rule or anything, just a rule so that I want to make sure you understand what it is. So once you have identified the rule, identify what is the antecedent, what is the consequent, and also how many cases does the rule actually apply to in the data that is given. By apply to, I mean, what are all the cases in which the rule actually holds? And also, what are the cases in which the rule doesn't hold? So for example, for the red-white case, we saw that the red-white case actually is successful in four of the 10 cases, but it also failed in one of the cases. So we want to do the same thing for the rule that you identify. So again, what I would say is pause the video, answer these questions, and then go forward. So there are lots and lots of rules, and all I had asked you in the earlier case was to identify a single rule. But here, if you take a look at it, we could identify a rule just from the first row saying, if, when red occurs, white also occurs. We could also say when red occurs, blue occurs. That is on row number five. Or we could say when white occurs, red occurs. That could be from row number one, or it could be from uh, uh, row number eight, and so on. So there are many rules that we can think of. Or you could even think of rules in which there are multiple items in the antecedent or multiple items in the consequent or both. So from the first row itself, we can identify a rule that says when red and white are purchased, green is also purchased. So association doesn't have to be between single items. It could be between sets of items. So you see that example as well. So the point is that there are numerous rules that you can infer from the data. And even just from 10 rows here, we could identify so many different rules. Now, consider a real life scenario in which a typical shopping basket could have 15 to 20 items. And they could all be different items. You know, my basket could have some 20 different items. Your basket might have 15 items and they could all be, or many of them could be different from the items that I have. And in data mining, what you're trying to do is to look at thousands and thousands of such market baskets and identify the most powerful or most useful rules. Okay, but what we are seeing here is that you've got a huge number of rules. And of course, the number of rules can be far more than the number of observations itself. So that's a big challenge, trying to identify the good rules. So here, for example, if you take these two rules, when red is purchased, white is also purchased. There's another rule that says when red is purchased, blue is also purchased. We now want to think about which of these two rules is a better rule. What exactly do we mean by better? We want to quantify that concept. And that is what we'll be talking about in the rest of this lecture, really. So we want to put our finger and say, what exactly does it mean for a rule to be better than another rule? What do I mean when I say identify the best rules? First of all, before we get into that, take a look at this set of items, red, white, and green, which is the first row of our data set. Find out all the rules that you can derive from this item set. For example, we've already looked at one rule which says, when red is purchased, white is also purchased. You could clearly think of another rule that says, when red is purchased, green is also purchased. Another rule that says, when white and green are purchased, red is purchased, and so on and so on and so on. So what I want you to do is to again stop the video, identify 
all the rules that you can think of from this set of items. And then once you're done, proceed with the video. So let's look at the answer. So when we say red, white, green, let's first think of all rules in which you've got one item in the uh, antecedent and one item in the consequent. So that gives us all of these six different rules. Red to white, red to green, white to red, white to green, green to red, green to white. So that's going to be six. With three items, you're going to have six such rules. That's fine. Now let's think of rules in which you've got one item in the antecedent and two items in the consequent. Clearly, we can get three such rules because each of the three items can occur as the antecedent. And once you put that as the antecedent, the remaining two are going to be in the consequent. So you get three of these rules. And similarly, we can now look at rules in which you've got two items in the antecedent and one item in the consequent. Once again, you're going to have three rules because there are three different items and each of the three items can be the consequent and therefore the remaining two would be in the antecedent. So we've got these rules. Now, initially it appears as if this is an exhaustive set of rules. These 12 rules are the only rules you can derive from this. But actually speaking, it is also possible for the antecedent to be empty. Now, why does it make sense to consider an empty antecedent? Well, it is not that you want to recommend items for only those who have purchased other items. What about somebody who has not purchased any item? You could still make a recommendation for them. So it is possible to consider an empty antecedent and therefore we now have more rules. Empty antecedent implies red, empty antecedent implies white, etc. So that is all the one set, one item rules that we can identify with the empty antecedent, one item consequent or empty antecedent, two item consequence. And finally, empty antecedent and all three different items. So clearly we can see that a single set of items, a single transaction, even which has only three different items, can imply so many rules. And now when you think about transactions that have 20 items, just think about how many different rules there are to consider. And then when you consider thousands of such baskets, you're going to literally have hundreds of thousands or perhaps even millions of rules to consider. And what we're trying to do in association analysis is to identify the best of these rules that we can then exploit. So clearly what we're trying to do is first find all the rules and then select the good ones from the rules. So the question is, how do I systematically generate all the rules and then select the good ones? Of course, it's not necessary that we actually generate all the rules and then select the good ones. If we can figure out a way by which we can only generate the good rules, that's great. You don't have to go through the work of generating all the millions of rules. But how do you do this in a systematic way? Of course, before you start getting scared, how am I going to do this or do I have to really do this uh, tedious stuff? You know, you don't. We're going to use, obviously, uh, Rattle, the data mining tool, to do all of this work. But of course, when you use the tool, you really need to have an understanding of what the tool is doing so that you can interpret the results properly. So that's what we're trying to do, just to understand intuitively what's going on here. Before we do all of that, the first concept we want to discuss is the concept of an item set. An item set is simple enough, basically a set of items. An item set is simply a set of items. So red, white is an item set. Red alone is an item set. Red, white and green is an item set. White, orange and uh, red would be another item set, any set of items. In fact, the empty set is also an item set. Okay, so that's the idea of an item set. Now, why is an idea of the item set 